The tallest cactus in Minecraft is three blocks tall, right? Well, it's common knowledge that cacti can only grow three blocks, but then again, how could you explain this? How does Minecraft break the three block limit? And more importantly, what is the tallest cactus in Minecraft? About 96% of the audience who watch my videos don't subscribe, so if you enjoy my content and would like to see more, you can subscribe for free below. The reason 4 block cacti like this exist is actually pretty simple. Sometimes Minecraft decides to generate two separate cacti on top of each other, and when that happens, they add their height. As you can imagine, you can mix and match the three default cacti heights to get combined cacti between 2 and 6 blocks. This is really cool to see, but the question still remains, can big cactus grow any taller? 6 blocks is quite impressive and pretty rare, but 7 blocks is orders of magnitude harder to find. In this case, there needs to be at least 3 independent cacti that happen to generate on top of each other. So believe it or not, the odds of finding a 7 block tall cactus, despite being incredibly rare, is only marginally more common than an 8 or a 9 block cactus. But in the early days of the big cactus community, the problem was, nobody really cared to look for these massive cacti. The information for all of this was really not known, and nobody really had the resources to look. That was until Coolman entered the scene. Back in 2014, the Zipcrowd server was in full force and was highly interested in looking for seeds. Very important to their technical server was a quad witch hut, which was quite difficult to find naturally. To aid their search, the Code Raider and others developed a tool to programmatically simulate Minecraft's random generation and search for seeds. This finder was my first introduction to seed finding, and it inspired a whole new wave of people looking for unique objects and Minecraft seeds. In this second generation of seed finders were members of the SciCraft server, most notably L64 and Coolman. The SciCraft pioneers created simple libraries that they used to find structures, and they started solving new and novel problems. In this nebula of esoteric seed finding concepts, the idea to find the tallest cactus emerged. After reading the Minecraft code, Coolman discovered that it was relatively simple to write a program in Java to look for cacti on any given seed. This search would cover millions of locations across a single world, although it was relatively slow by modern standards. With his Java program and some patience, he was able to find some 8 and 9 block tall cacti, which was a major achievement for the cactus technology of the day. Although I was playing Minecraft back when these discoveries were made, I was not in the community where this information was known. In fact, my first introduction to the world of Big Cactus was through a Baron Dome video linked to me by my friend Matthew Bolin. He found a 6 tall cactus on 2B2T, which was amazing to see for the first time. At the time, I was heavily involved in the Minecraft speedrunning scene, and since the majority of popular attempts involved running through deserts, it inevitably led to tall cacti being found left and right. Look at the cactus, what the heck? Being of the third generation of seed finders, Matthew and I were of course interested in finding the biggest cactus, although we had other priorities at the time, like finding seeds for the SSG speedrun. So yet again, with a lot of potential, the room for growth was left unexplored. Like I mentioned before, the programs used to search for cacti were pretty slow back in the day, and primarily focused on finding tall cacti within a seed, not finding seeds with tall cacti, which is much more efficient. This methodology all started to change in early 2020. Captain Wutax is one of the smartest guys in the technical community, and he was instrumental in harnessing the power of parallel computing for seed finding. Cap was introduced to the concept of big cactus by Matthew, and he quickly got obsessed. The reason why parallel processing is so important is because it's great at computing lots of data. I won't get into the gritty details, but basically, instead of running a single piece of code over and over again at a super high speed, it runs lots of code concurrently at a slightly less but still super high speed. This approach allows for a greater volume of simple work to be processed in a shorter amount of time. Parallelization is primarily done on graphics cards and is used by lots of computationally massive projects such as machine learning training and Bitcoin mining. Now since some problems in seed finding can require trillions upon trillions of seeds to be checked, parallel computing can really come in handy. With help from Neil and Earth Computer, Cap was able to create a GPU cactus finder. This code was like Coolman's but much much faster. 
When all was said and done, he was able to crank through millions and millions of seeds per second. Once the GPU code hit the scene, it was an exciting time for the Big Cactus community. Records were getting better by the day. Both Violent and Cactus Duper were donating their GPU power to the cause. Soon, there was a 10 block tall cactus. Then 11. Then 12. Finally, on April 23rd, 2020, a 13 block tall cactus was found, marking the absolute maximum height for the project. Remember this Matthew guy I've been talking about? Yeah, he's actually a genius. In a single day, he revolutionized seed finding for the sake of big cactus. The way most of the seed finding had been done in the past was to look for a chunk that satisfied a single goal and match that chunk to a world seed. This is simple for a single chunk, but is very, very difficult to look for multiple chunks if they need to be adjacent to each other because their placement in the world is pretty much random. There was a major discovery around this time that found that cacti from one chunk can cross chunk borders and end up getting placed in an adjacent chunk. This meant that if you were able to find several big cacti from multiple chunks and stack them on each other, the world of big cactus would forever be changed. But this would require a major rework of the strategies used so we could find these adjacent chunks. This is exactly what Matthew set out to do when he went live on Twitch on Friday, April 24th. In a single day, he invented a way to find multiple adjacent chunks. The incredible realization Matthew had was that if you look at the distance between chunks and use them in the seed equation, you can simplify the problem down and remove coordinate dependence entirely. If that went over your head, that's okay, but what this realization meant was that now you could look for multiple adjacent chunks at the same time. And with that piece of the puzzle, a whole new realm of big cactus was born. Once this concept was finalized, the implementation remained to be programmed. So for several hours, Matthew worked out his thought process into a clear, concise diagram and proceeded to spend even more time coding it up. This application of multi-chunk technology to seed theory was Matthew's magnum opus and was widely regarded as one of the hardest problems to crack in the seed finding community. However, with some cool linear algebra and a sprinkle of brute force, all the parts were crystallizing at a rapid pace. Finally, the code was ready to crunch some numbers. The immediate plan was to use one of the fresh 13 block tall cacti and slap a 6 block cactus on top of it. Seeing as 6 blocks are dirt cheap, it was believed that the record would fall any minute. There were some immediate problems with the code though. For instance, Matthew forgot to multiply chunk coordinates by 16 to get the real location of the world. But after some debugging, all the kinks were ironed out and 19 block candidates fell out of the woodwork. The last step was to check these locations with programs to weed out any terrain errors. Luckily, Cap had written some code to do just that, so Matthew fed the candidates through the code and the results were disappointing. It turns out that Cap's code had been bugged the whole time meaning that most of the computational progress during the stream had been undone in a heartbeat. So, recouping from this loss, there was a mad scramble to get the data back, which was luckily facilitated by Cactus Duper. She graciously donated her computational resources to the cause in the 11th hour and saved the stream. Within the hour, the record was obliterated with a 19 block. Is That's a real cactus? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh! oh my god! <laughs> Now you may be asking yourself, why in the world would these grown adults devote hundreds of collective hours towards finding a big plant? Each person might have their own answer, but to me, projects like this are so interesting because they're a beautiful and tangible visualization of coding, math, and science. Minecraft is a wonderful sandbox and a great place to experiment with so many unique quirks and fun features. And luckily, there are groups of people looking to push the limits and break the game in silly ways. Hopefully you find seed science interesting as well. And if you do, you definitely need to subscribe to the people mentioned in this video. All their links are in the description. To this day, the frontier of Big Cactus is being pushed through crowdsourced computing 
with Boink and the Minecraft at Home team. So far they've already found a 20 block cactus and are gunning for 24. If you're interested in helping the cause of Big Cactus and other super neat seed projects with the idle time of your computer, join the Discord below where you'll find all the information you need. It's free and goes to a great cause.